Let's talk about what to do with your whiskey collection. At first, this may seem like a relatively straightforward topic, but you drink it, right? Isn't that the point? You buy a bunch of whiskey, you drink it. It's not that simple. So let's break it down here. You could ask probably 50 different people with 50, 50 different bourbon collections what they should do with said bourbon collections, and you probably get 50 different answers. I make this video because there's a very, very vocal group that's pretty sure of what you should do with your whiskey collection. In fact, I got a comment on one of my videos that the only right way to collect whiskey or you should never collect with this is what it said. You should never collect whiskey. You should drink it. Open your bottles. Well, as you can see, <laughs> I don't open all of my bottles. So there's got to be more than one option. But let's start with that vocal group, that open your bottles group, because I see merit to it. I mean, after all, it's made to be drunk. As pretty as it is, you don't just want to sit there and ogle lust after the whiskey that you already own. It's yours. You might as well drink it. They're reacting to people hoarding whiskey, buying a bunch of the good stuff and making the good stuff hard for the rest of us to find. That is okay. That's a good thing to be mad at. Hoarders may be driving a bulk of the demand for high-end bourbon products, and a lot of that whiskey is probably going undrunk in basements. So it's a very valid, valid approach to say, listen, when you have your whiskey collection, open your bottles and drink them. You've got all these special releases, you might as well know what they taste like, so open them and enjoy them. Your whiskey should last with an open bottle for a few years. Like I've heard people say you need to drink it within a year. That's probably not true. You probably have a few years before a lot of oxygen exposure takes a toll on your whiskey. So yeah, open them and drink them. Now it does become a problem though if you have a multi-hundred bottle collection. So more than 100, multi-hundred, 200, a lot of hundreds, multiple hundreds of bottles. Um, because if you have all of those open, like how much whiskey can you possibly drink? Like the average bourbon aficionado or bourbon enthusiast probably drinks too much. That said, you know, if you have 400 open bottles and let's say on the high end, those are good for five years a piece, five years, so 400 bottles, five years. So it's like 250 weeks. So you're pounding a bottle of whiskey a week. More than that, <laughs> way more than that, if you have a 400 bottle collection. So that's probably not the answer. You probably don't want all of your whiskey open if you've got a massive collection. So let's talk about some of the other options. I think there are other options. Sue me, don't sue me, please don't sue me. I don't wanna be sued, but get mad at me. I don't care, you're uh, through the screen, you can't do anything. I've already gotten some nasty comments on my videos. It's not for everybody. Second thing then, is investing. What do I do with my whiskey collection? Well, you can just hold it. You can hold it for a long time. Bourbon values, particularly high-end limited release values, are through the roof. 10 years ago, you'd go around and buy Buffalo Trace antique collection stuff like George T. Stagg off the shelf for $70. And then the resale, well, there wasn't much of a resale market because the world hadn't lost its mind in search of limited release bourbons, in particular, Buffalo Trace antique collection. Now, you can buy a bottle for 100 if you're very, very lucky, and you can immediately flip it for five to eight hundred dollars depending on which bottle you just got save it for a few years and that bottle may be worth more than a thousand dollars so bourbon is not a bad investment if you know what you are looking for now again people are going to say it's made to be drunk well that's cool and all that but i mean oil is meant to be used in cars right and yet you might still trade commodities it's the way the world works so, uh, if you wanted to, 
get a collection and look at it for a long time and then eventually use some kind of broker to sell off your collection. Not a bad plan, financially speaking. Doesn't look like the value of American whiskey is going to go down anytime soon. That said, the stocks, like the current production levels of American whiskey are massive. So if we did see any decline in demand, you might get a little bit screwed. But the high-end stuff's probably not going to like absolutely tank unless we hit just a utterly terrible financial crisis like COVID or something. So investing, yeah, I mean... No judgment. I'm not judging. I'm just saying it's an option. You judge. I don't care. Put it in the comments what you think. Before I move on to the next one, some of you have said, hey, really like your videos, and which I appreciate. Thank you very much. Some of you have said you should have more followers. I agree. I agree. I need bourbon disciples. If you do think I need more followers, hey, give, give this a share. Share it on your Facebooks or the Instagrams. Follow me at Drew P. Whiskey on Instagram. That'd be cool of you. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video. All right, next up. You can do what I do. You can hold your bottles for special occasions. Now, I've got a lot of special occasions in my future, but I intentionally do not open all of my bottles because I want to enjoy what I have open. I don't want to have an existential crisis whenever I come down to my basement and try and decide what to drink that night. So I try and limit my open bottles to 5 to 10 or so. And I want to be wise with my money. So I have a decent amount of money behind me on the bar. And on the off chance my family fell into some financial hard times, I've got a wife and two kids with one on the way. So I need to be aware that if something bad happened, I have an asset behind me that if I needed to liquidate, I could work with a broker, handle it legally, and sell some of my whiskey. That's not the end of the world. That's a good reason to sell your whiskey. So I plan to drink all of it. I don't plan to sell it if I do well financially and retire or do well financially and get in a very stable place as I get older and my kids are taken care of, then yeah, I'll probably open all of my bottles and share them with friends and it'll be great. Meanwhile, I'm aware that I put some money into my whiskey and I'm not independently wealthy. And so on the off chance something goes bad, I don't want to be sitting here drinking myself to death alone. My family having left me because I couldn't provide for them. Whew. I mean, that got a little deep. On we go. All right. Next, this is probably the worst thing you can do with your bourbon, is you can bunker it. A bunker is not necessarily an investment, but you're buying it to hoard it. Like, oh, I might not always be able to get Henry McKenna, so I'm going to buy 30 of them and bunker them. Well, <laughs> people who are often bunkering something like Henry McKenna are also bunkering something like Eagle Rare, are also bunkering something like... Knob Creek 15 year old single barrels, all fantastic whiskeys, worth having a few of them around. But all that bunkering is just buying whiskey and storing it on the off chance that that whiskey may not be available in the future. Okay, maybe it's not an off chance, maybe that's a legitimate chance the whiskey's not available in the future. But what we're learning is that there will always be good bourbon, so you don't need to bunker it when you bunker it, you're creating demand for a product that's actually not getting drunk and you're making it harder for other people to find the product. Then you just amass this massive collection in your basement or whatever that you'll eventually die and leave to somebody else. Which, is that the worst thing? No, as long as they drink it. But I kind of land somewhere in the middle here that, you know, you could open some bottles, give some bottles away. Like, you can't take it with you. That's an important lesson to learn right away. So enjoy your life, share, be generous, and let's maybe approach this thing with an abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset. The idea that good bourbon is scarce or the best bourbons are scarce is kind of true, but it's just like working us into a froth. And I think it's cultivating a lot of greed that then just causes us to buy and buy and buy and buy so we can have. And I just, I, I don't know that that's a great way to like celebrate the beverage we claim to love. So let's just chill out.
where there's greed, money lusting, secondary market's a good example of this. Like that's how the, the bur that's how bourbon will eventually go bad is there will be busts of the secondary market. People will be got, got trading thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in bourbon and they're gonna get put away eventually. Like ATF is gonna get wise about what's happening on the bourbon secondary market and it's, uh, it's gonna go south. So I recommend you don't let your collecting be motivated uh, by greed uh, as that may cause you to make some choices that maybe you might regret. There's an abundance of good bourbon. It doesn't look like it's gonna be scarce in our lifetime. All right, finally, and I think this is the best idea, something I might consider doing, is you could partner with a few folks in your area and create um, kind of a bourbon society. You can work with one of your boys and outfit their basement, create a speakeasy, if you will, create with glass cabinets full of all of your collections to be shared and celebrated through tastings. You can, you can actually create these bourbon societies legally where you have memberships, you have dues, and then you have access together to this shared supply of pretty awesome whiskeys. Because you can also go together to buy fairly exotic bottles that you might not otherwise be able to afford on your own and then it belongs to the society. You should read about it. Super cool. I think there was a Bourbon Pursuit episode about bourbon societies. Pretty sure there was a couple of years ago. Worth checking out um, because it's, you know, what we say bourbon's all about, which is time together, enjoying with friends, settling down, slowing down, and building relationships. Like... And I agree, that's bourbon at its best, but we often don't enjoy it at its best. So maybe we should really intentionally return to that. Even if you don't start a society, I would recommend you focus on sharing. Do the host tastings, bring out your good bottles for that. Share it with your friends. Maybe they don't appreciate it as you would. Maybe they don't fully recognize that you gave them some George T. Stag. They don't know what that means. But you know what it means. And if we all say bourbon's meant to be enjoyed, well, those are the most enjoyable times. Well, that was more than the usual nonsense, but felt like it was a good topic to hit because there's a lot of, as I said, conflict maybe on the social medias about what you should do with your bourbon. Should you open it? Probably, yeah, eventually. Do you need to open all your bottles now? No, you don't. You need to be wise with your money and your resources. Should you bunker it? Um, you know, it's fine to have, make sure you have bourbon that you love, but don't be crazy. Have a plan for it. Are you gonna sell it? Are you gonna trade it? Are you gonna use it to buy a beach house one day? Like, those are all fine reasons. Don't just hoard to hoard. That's never done anybody any good. What if your house burns down? That would suck. Be careful smoking around that stuff if you're a smoker. You might just burn your house down. <laughs> so, um, If you like this video, like this video. My next episode is gonna be about how to buy bourbon for beginners. Maybe you'll learn something, maybe it'll just be a good time. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you have any ideas, questions, comments, thoughts for this show, just leave them in the comments below, I read them. Thanks, bye.